Hi oh guys, welcome back. We've got a cool one today. The weather's been absolutely terrible. It's been windy and raining, loads of storms coming over. So we've been back in the shed, making up some spinner targets. I've been using a few of the ones we had from Amazon in the video previous. I've also rescued an old bison knockdown target as well. So we've got a bit of scrap metal, a few new targets, and I'll tell you what, I'm really happy how it's turned out. It's brilliant. I don't think it matters how old you get. There's always something pretty fun about shooting a spinner target. I've built this one pretty stout and hopefully when the weather improves we can push it out to some longer ranges so let's get into it guys i've got a bit of a brainwave forgot about this it's got to be 15 years old it's been sat in the hedge as you can see it was completely full of grass and mud i remember it being broken back then i think some of the mechanism all fell apart but looking at it we've got some quite hefty little bisons here the actual body and everything is all corroded rotten away but the bisons themselves are in pretty good order so i think what we're going to do we're going to use these i'm going to give them a clean up we've also got some of the spinners left over from the last video that we did making a target i think we'll combine the two of these make up a nice little frame i reckon that them little bisons they're just over probably two inches long nice little resetting targets i reckon that'd be quite fun to use those out at 100 yards so i think what we'll do is start getting these cleaned up find some more scraps make up a little frame and see if we can turn it into something decent eh? Right, I think we might have a contender for the best bit of scrap metal. Now, this looks a little bit like a urinal. I promise you it's not. It's actually some leftovers. Sam and I had a fire truck a few years ago, or a small one that we was converting into a camper. And this is a bit of a leftover. The roller shutter doors, these were covers on that. They were actually water trough, so not far off of the urinal. But we've got a really nice profile on there. I reckon if I can get this through the bandsaw, might be a bit dodgy, but I reckon if we cut that, we can use the frame maybe that way up. We'll cut the ends off what we'll do we do it like a cardboard box and leave some tabs in and then we can put a little bar across the front like that with the spinners on i don't know it'll either um work really well or it'll end in tears let's give it a go i reckon we can run this through the bandsaw i've got a dull blade in the big saw at the moment so i think what we'll do we'll um we'll mark this up and see whether or not we can actually get it through the saw it's only sort of three mil thick alley, so the six teeth per inch blades that I use for the woodwork, when they are dull, they should cut this quite well. But whether or not I can feed this through the saw safely, I don't know. But it'll be fun to try. Let's see what happens, shall we? Huh. Well, we're pretty sketchy, but got quite a nice flat cut on there. It's worked out pretty well. Save that for something else. That looks pretty useful. That's got to be a target older in itself, isn't it? All right, file it. Which way round are we going to have it? Do you reckon that way? I reckon that way because then we can stand it up in front of that aluminium backboard, it's a bit taller. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark out some little tabs into here. Right, cool. Turn it back outside and we we'll mark it up. Right, our temperature's dropping quick. Yeah. Right, just some rough marks on there so we can 
set it up on the guide on the bandsaw. Hmm. Not sure whether this is going to work, but we'll um, we'll roll with it. We're here now. Let's have a go. Nice. We'll, nice, we'll bend them around, we'll drill those at home. Don't know if to leave these edges on or not yet. I'm glad we've got a knackered old blade in here, that's coming quite handy. Right, I'll see you at home. Right, I've changed my mind, I'm going to cut these edges off of here, so we've just left with the tabs so we can fold them in, because otherwise we'll have these weird bits sticking out the side. So, let's have a go, shall we? Definitely find a use for them scraps. Right, we'll get this home, we'll get them drilled, we'll fold these around. We need to um, drill these a bit lower down so that the tops of the bisons are up here somewhere. Yeah, nice. Well, we could do it that way as well. We could put another base on it. Ooh, and then it's all enclosed, it should catch a fair bit. Not sure. We didn't have a plan for this one, just freestyling it, so let's get home, it's getting cold up here. Well, there's some pretty cool bits if ever I saw them. Alright, nice. Alright, now let's actually go home. Morning right, guys, we're back. This has turned out pretty well. It's actually a few days later. I'm really struggling with time to get my videos filmed at the moment. I'm so busy with work, but we're here. We're going to give this a quick hit with the old Scotch Bright pad on the DA sander. See if we can just give this a clean up while it's relatively flat before we then deburr it all, go over it, try and then get it drilled, fold these little flaps in. The little targets have turned out pretty well. I've also got some of the spinners. So the plan is, is to have a bison, then a spinner, then a bison and a spinner alternating across the width here. Well, between these uprights here. So let's quickly get this cleaned up, get stuck in, shall we? Right, let's quickly get the drill out, get some holes drilled through these. We're going to drill these at probably seven millimetres. We've got M6 rod to run between the two, so that'll just give us a little bit of wiggle room. Hopefully, when we bend these up, they won't end up going too squiffy. If they do, we might have to end up opening up one of these holes just to give us a little bit of misalignment so we can true it all up. But quickly drill them and we'll see how it goes. I don't know what grade of aluminium this is, but it's very soft. 
don't think I've ever worked with anything quite as soft as this. Looking at how this was bent originally, it's obviously gone in like a press brake type thing. There's not really any way of, um, there's not really any, oh no, there's a little bit of stretching. So hopefully when we fold these around, it won't, um, it won't tear or anything mental. So we're gonna try and get that in the vise now. We're just gonna try and quickly fold them over just carefully. That's cool, we can trim them up by eye. Now we need to hang, oh, that's gonna be awkward. Because this little folded lip here. Uh, the toy was having a tiny workshop, if I put that there. Right, got a plan. Bear with me. Right, hopefully that works. So I've got the longer jaw on the vise itself. Now, of course, this piece here would fail this. So I've slid it along. The tab is now down here and we've got the vise this end and the clamp that end, so that should hold it tight and hopefully just fold that downwards. Right, that seems to have worked. very cool. Right, so I've got myself a little bit of threaded bar, just a bit longer than the tabs, of course. When we tighten this up, we can always give it a little bit of a flex if we need to. We've got the bisons here. I've just drilled out the holes. I've opened them out to six millimeters in the little Amazon paddles there. So what we're gonna do, I think we'll alternate these. We're gonna put some little tube spacers between each of them. So, little one. What I'm curious mostly about now, is whether or not this M6 bar is actually going to be rigid enough. It might start bowing in the centre a little bit, so we may need to put a centre support in from down here up onto this bar somewhere. We'll find out. So I'm just going to do a quick test assemble, see whether or not they sag a little bit. So they definitely need some little tube spaces in because they sit a bit wafty. It'll also help keep everything nice and centered. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Five centimeter tube spaces. I'll show you what I've got for that. All right, so we've got some aluminium tube. This is half inch outer diameter, so just under 13 millimeters, and it's 10 gauge. So it actually is quite conveniently gives us just over a six millimeter bore that will slide over that beautifully. So we're gonna get the bandsaw set up. We'll cut these just over 50 millimeters long, then we'll chuck them in the lathe and clean all the ends up. Right, this is looking pretty cool. I've just cut myself two slightly longer posts, one through either end to make up the space, but I do need to leave a little bit of space in between that last post and this outside edge so I can put a locking nut, a little M6 nut either side of this so that we're not putting tension directly on the post itself. So the two nuts will be locked together either side of these little tabs and it should mean that there's no tension on this. It doesn't pull these up too tight and wedge them all together.
should do. Right, cool, now we're getting somewhere. I've just loosely assembled this. I've just put on here some just standard M6 nuts. They're gonna be locking nuts. Now, hopefully we've got enough flex in here to get this together. Right. He sits a little bit wafty. Maybe we need to just give him a little bit of a bend. A little fine tune. Oh, look, big prints on him. I'm not going to um, completely strip and sand this down, certainly not in here anyway. It's, you could actually polish this up if you really wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. It's certainly not in here anyway. Um, what we're going to do, we'll nip that up. I think that's pretty robust in the middle, actually. There's a little bit of flex to it, but these tube spacers have taken up a bit of that slack. I think we'll see how it pans out. So we've got the little bisons, we've got the little knockdowns. I think what I do need to do is just deburr these slightly better. I opened out the holes in the Amazon paddles to um, six millimetres. I think if I just open them up just a tiny bit more, maybe put a bit more of a chamfer on the edge of the holes, they will spin probably a bit better. Although not too bad, once that's got clattered by a air rifle pellet, I think that'll do pretty well. Right, I've given it a quick clean and a little bit of a deburr. Really, I do want to get this painted, but we haven't got the weather at the moment. I haven't got anywhere indoors or anything like that that we can actually paint something this size. So we're gonna get it all assembled. We're gonna run it out the farm and then we're gonna go and shoot it. I think we're gonna carry on with this frame down the line. We might be able to add some additional targets to it. I wonder if we can even get the biathlon target screwed to it. So eventually we have a whole wall of targets that's got a sort of built-in backstop, should be pretty cool. Right, let's get this all together. Not sure what's going on with the weather, but the last couple of weeks it's been flipping terrible. Every week when I wanted to try and get a video done, it's been blowing a gale, absolutely tipping it down. It's just starting to rain again now, so we won't be able to get out in the backfields and push the distances today, unfortunately. The backfield's actually still underwater. It has been now for a couple of weeks, which is a bit of a shame. It's not too windy out there. It is a little bit breezy, but just typical, really. Right, so we've got just a couple of millimetres of slack on there. That all feels a lot better now. Right, I think we'll take the catch around today as it's raining. I'll see you at the farm. Right then, we're here guys. It is cold, it is wet. It's not nice really weather to be shooting, but I'm quite excited to be having a little play with this spinner target. It's turned out really well. We've got some Barracuda 8s here with the Catran. They're not the most accurate thing in this, however they were what I had to hand. So let's see whether or not we can actually hit it. I don't know whether this is zeroed or not. So we're just going to go for the second left bison. Just try and pump one straight down the middle. <laughs> Spinners are so much fun. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so it's not too far off zero then. As soon as this weather perks up a little bit and the fields dry out, we'll take this out to some of the extended ranges. I think these bisons are going to be just a nice size to push out sort of 75 yards plus. Of course, we've got the little ones there. I do think going forward, I'm going to use this frame, add a bunch more bits to it, keep it all bolted together, and then maybe put some wheels on it so I can just trundle it around the farm. That'd be pretty cool, I think. See so if we can put an eye on the next bison, shall we? <laughs> I don't care what anyone says, like little spinning targets are fun. Right, let's go for the one in the middle, the little um, Amazon spinner. I deburred all the edges of these a little bit better. Where they're on threaded bar, they sort of were getting a little bit bound up. There must have been a few little burrs. So I've given them a good clean up around the drilled holes where I opened them out. Let's see how well they spin. What a ripper. I tell you what, if you've got a little um, frame a bit like this, sort of a bench sheet frame, it wouldn't be that hard if you wanted to fully enclose it. I think what I will do is keep my eye out for some more scraps of alley. And maybe going forward, we'll actually completely box it all in so it catches everything. Normally down here, when it's a dry day, I'll just have a little sweep up. But I tell you what, this is pretty cool. Right, let's go for the little tiny ones. Hey, spins a treat. 
That was the one that I was a little bit concerned about when we were back at home. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Let's pop another eyeball on the left bison, shall we? Oh, he's a little bit wobbly, that one. Maybe I need to just adjust the tension of them all. Or maybe just put a couple of little washers between them just so that they stand upright a bit more. Hopefully, though, this will be pretty good. At the longer ranges, it'll mean we'll get to see it on camera when I hit them at the longer ranges, and I won't have to keep legging it back and forwards and resetting them, so... Hopefully, it will pan out like we want it to. Right, last one. Come on, I usually miss at least one. <laughs> I pulled it to the left a little bit. This is actually shooting just marginally to the left. I do need to give it a couple of clicks, but... That's really cool. I really enjoyed that build. It was fun. It was nice to use up some of these weird scraps. Now, I am an absolute hoarder. Whenever I see anything like this in a skip, any bits on the farms, any of my mates' farms, I just can't help myself. When you get these really cool bits of aluminium profile and stuff, I just, I've just i got stuff stashed in one of the lockups that's been here for donkey years. For most people, it's just absolute junk. But when you need that weird bit of metal, that weird shaped bit of stuff, I just can't help myself. So. Hopefully the weather improves slightly in the coming weeks. It's been absolutely terrible. I've got some really cool stuff to do. And there's a few game changing things going on in the background as well. That's one of the reasons I've been quite busy. There's some pretty mad stuff going on. Um, and hopefully in the next week or two, maybe the next month, I'll be able to put some stuff on YouTube that you almost certainly won't have seen before. So see you next time.